Okay, well, maybe this is going to work. Um, what I can promise you is that at the end of the day, uh, what goes on the screen will be available to you for download from our website. So you'll have a copy of everything I write up here. If you are lucky, this recording will work and you'll have a, a recording of my voice saying all these pearls of wisdom as well. But don't count on either of those things because technology breaks all the time. You women at the back table need to come up here. You cannot see anything meaningful from there. This is the last time I'm going to ask. Please and thank you very nicely. The questions that go up on the board are the same as the questions you have on the handout in front of you. And these are the questions that you will see on the exam, minus any some distinguishing characteristics. So we're going to go through and review and make sure you know about what it is you need to know on each of these topics. The first set of questions shows the axis but does not show the object. If you read the text, you'll see that we have objects A, B, C, and D. A and B are moving to the right, C and D moving to the left. So perhaps on the day you're going to see something like this. Yeah, indicating the position of A. Now what do you see about directions? Uh, this underline here indicates that this is not shown on your preview version. But just for chucks, let's say that uh, the positive direction is going to be to the left on the test. And golly, you should mark up those directions as soon as you find out. So for this object A, how would you describe this object? Uh, you can, okay, here, here are... Here's a question you're going to be asked. Here's a question. Here's a question. Here's a question. Here's a question. For each of these questions, you're going to select from these possible responses. <coughs> or this one here. So let's see. Could this object be a match for the first question? No. 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 Because its, its velocity is clearly changing. Could it be a match for the second question? No. no. Why not? Because it has a net force. Yes. Like and if the net force is greater than zero, it can't be that one. then the acceleration is greater than zero. Net force of zero means acceleration is zero, so it can't be A. Uh, is this object accelerating to the left? No. Yes. Correct. It is not, ex wait a minute. No. It's not accelerating to the left. What if it said, is this object accelerating to the negative direction? Yes. Yes. Because acceleration means changing velocity, not necessarily speeding up or slowing down. You have to know what direction we're talking about. Uh, let's see. Could the object be moving right and accelerating left? Yes. Yeah, you betcha. What would the motion diagram look like? Uh, slowing down. Right. Excellent. See? As long as you do this stuff careful, it'll be great. Carefully. So this is an object moving this way with acceleration this way. And if we're talking about directions, remember acceleration and delta V are interchangeable terms for these purposes. Uh, let's see. This object would be moving to the right according to an observer in object A. Well, let's see. Let's practice. How could you answer this one here? Let's say there's some other. Uh, OK, let's put another one up there for the sake of our, uh, what do you call it? Uh, let's say object C is going like this. And boy, oh boy, should you mark up the paper when you get it. You should mark the heck out of your paper. So how would an observer in A see object C moving? How do you answer that question? The scope test. You imagine yourself as a bug in object A and keeping your scope pointed 
at object C. If your scope swings to the positive direction, then that object you're looking at is moving in the positive direction. If your scope is pointed in the negative direction and the object is getting smaller in your scope, then the object is moving in the negative direction. Got it? So let's see. Uh, what's the only trick here? Well, object A is moving this way. C is moving this way. So if this is the same time interval, where are both of the objects at time zero? What do you mean, Mr. D'Amato? Yeah. I have a guess, Mr. D'Amato. What's time zero, Mr. D'Amato? Time zero, when we, when we first mark the position of A, when we first see A, where is it? Point. Yeah. It's here, then it's here, then it's here, then it's here. When we first see C, where is it? Point. It's here, then it's here, then it's here, then it's here, then it's here. So let's see. Let's make a, a telescope. Okay, here's my telescope pointing towards C over there. Then it's pointing, well, hang on, let's do this. Here's the line. Pointing to C, pointing to C, pointing to C, pointing to C. So which way is that telescope swinging? The telescope is going in this direction. So A sees C moving this way, closer, then farther away. OK? Or you could call it left. Or what else could you call it? The positive direction. And uh, this question we already addressed. Accelerating to the right means this way and speeding up. Or this way and slowing down. Next page. A couple more. Same setup with A, B, C, D. Motion, here's three questions. <coughs> Motion of this object could match the expression. This is going to be math. Okay? <coughs> so, our math expressions for motion for constant velocity. That is, when the acceleration is zero, the position at any time is equal to the initial position plus that constant velocity times the clock rate. So let's see. In the previous example, our object C was going like this. On the test, they'll be carefully drawn so you can count the number of spaces between. It looks like C is a more or less constant velocity here. And we said for the purposes of our example here, positive was to the left. So could C match? 
gosh, this expression. What's that? It says math. So this expression, what can you tell about the motion of an object from looking at this expression? Good. Good, good. Excellent, guys. Yep. The velocity is negative 2 meters per second. And initial position. Could this be object C? Uh, no. Or wait, how can you, excellent. How do you know that it could not be object C, Mike? Because it didn't start at positive 12, it started in the negatives. Do we know that for sure? No, no. Okay, good, excellent question, excellent observation. Okay, that's the negative direction. It means numbers are getting smaller. But even better than that, Yes, yes. Every tick that goes by, whatever is happening to this position, it's getting bigger. It's going in the positive direction. So this is, whatever happens, this has to have a positive velocity. So this expression doesn't match C. Let's try another one. Uh, could this expression Let's change it just a little bit. Could this expression in green match the motion of C? You're tempted to initially think so, because very cleverly, you notice that now the velocity is positive. But what's this term here? What does that tell you? Yes. Yep. This reminds us that this expression does not represent an object moving with a constant velocity. This expression looks like the equation for motion with constant acceleration. In which the position is equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity times the clock reading plus one half of the constant acceleration times the clock reading squared. So as soon as you see any term resembling this, you know there's an acceleration. Now here's a question regarding this expression. We know it doesn't match C. What is the acceleration of this object? Well, let's see. Look at the expression. Positive 1 meter per second squared times t squared which part of the expression for constant motion for constant acceleration that's this so if one half a t squared equals one meter per second squared t squared what's a You don't have to get all algebraic here. If you want, though, you can divide by t squared, multiply by 2, and find a equals 2 meters per second squared. You know what? Put in the signs. Even if it's positive, write the sign to remind yourself that you check it. No. Uh, forge my name.
Let's see. Positive acceleration. Is this object speeding up or slowing down? Actually. Slowing down. Actually. <coughs> it's going to start out. Its initial velocity is positive. Yeah. And its acceleration is positive. It can't be doing anything but speeding up the whole time. Dig? Questions about this? So uh, you will have, there will be provided to you a formula sheet with things like this. Now what if the expression you're offered to match doesn't include an x? What if it includes something like this? Um, And on the objects given to you, you've got, let's see, this is plus, this is net minus. And you have and either of those match. How do you know? Because this is a constant velocity in the negative direction. And like if it doesn't give you the position, you have to assume it's zero. Well, this doesn't say anything at all about the position, right? Or did you did you mean? Oh, wait. Hey, if the clock reading is zero. What's the velocity according to this expression? Negative 2 meters per second. One second later, what's the velocity? Negative 2 meters per second. Second after that, negative 2 meters per second. So this is a mathematical representation saying the object is moving at a constant velocity. Doesn't say where it is. Now, could it match this second object? Uh, no, it couldn't. Because although it's moving in the negative direction, there is some acceleration in this direction. And this shows a velocity that doesn't change. All right? The, when you see a question like this on the review sheet, it's going to be a multiple choice question. Uh, two objects moving in the same direction. The constant speed of one is blah, and the constant speed of the other is blah. When you start observing them, they pass the same location at the same time. So go straight to your mathematical representation. As soon as we see, hey, you know what? Anytime you see that, remind yourself. Uh, that means the first object has some constant velocity. And the second object When you start observing them, they pass the same location at the same time. <coughs> what are you going to look for in the mathematical representations you're given? Which part of this is the, tells you about the initial location of the object? This x zero, because when you put in, when you put in zero for time, so when you identify the x zero quantity, it's going to need to be the same in both mathematical expressions. 
your multiple choice questions are, uh, uh, options are going to look like this and this, where there's two mathematical expressions. So the initial position's got to be the same. Constant speed of one is blah, constant speed of the other is blah. There will be numbers in there. How do you check? Where do you see the speed? Here, 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 here. Yeah, the speed is in here. This is velocity, and this is related to the speed. <coughs> How? If the velocity is, I don't know, let's say, 5 meters per second in the negative direction, what's the speed? Tell your, tell your neighbor. Right? If you drive five miles an hour in your car south, speedometer, speedometer says five miles an hour. If you drive five meters per second north in your car, the speedometer says five. The speed is just the absolute value of the velocity. You know that. So be careful in case the question tries to trick you by giving you two velocities that are both mm -hmm. negative. Or for that matter, could they be opposite signs? Sure. They could pass the same point at the same time and be going in opposite directions, as long as the speeds match up. So that's not going to be too hard either. Uh, in which of the following situations is the underlined object not accelerating? Well, acceleration. is change in velocity. Velocity is speed and direction. Okay. Change in speed is accelerating. Change in direction is accelerating. <coughs> so you look at the choices and you and you check off for yourself is this changing speed? Is this changing direction? If the answer to either question is yes, it is accelerating. And be mindful, there might be some force questions mixed in there. Maybe it's a bunch of force diagrams. Let's see. If it's force diagrams, Which of these objects would be accelerating? Just remember, golden rule. You look at the force diagram, you look at the description, and you get an idea of the total force. <coughs> if they look equal, they're equal. The total force on this object is zero. It's not accelerating. Could it be moving? You betcha. How? Constant speed. This object, don't have any numbers, but the total force is clearly in the up direction. So there's going to be an acceleration in the up direction. Is it speeding up? Not necessarily. Could be going down and slowing like the elevator car stopping on the ground floor. Okay. Everybody who made up those force diagram questions from the 
uh, dynamics exam is going to be so glad for all the work they did. Because here's the exact same set of choices to match force diagrams to word descriptions. So there'll be a bunch of questions. What do you need to determine from the words in each question? Talk to each other. What you're going to get here is a description of some object in some situation. So what do you look for? Uh, the object of interest is going to be underlined in every statement. Well, it's not going to say easy like the floor is pushing up 10 and the earth is pulling down 10. You're going to have a question like, a stool is at rest on the floor. Okay, what if it says, stool, yes, think about what's acting on it. Stool at rest on floor. Okay, draw the force diagram for what it says. Stool, make a sketch. Boy, if you make a sketch, there's nothing you can get wrong. So we do have earth down. Anything else pushing or pulling on the stool? That's right. If that were the only force on the stool, the stool would be accelerating downward. Not. The floor is pushing up equally. So for this one, A would be the best choice. Let's see. What if there's a situation that describes, say, a couple of acrobats? Uh, they're standing on each other. There's one standing on the head of the of the first one. And your object of interest, say, is that. If he's at rest, which of these force diagrams matches him? Remember the trick. Don't go looking for justification of what you think. Because if you do that, you will always find it. That's just the way the brain works. Do your scientist trick and look for a reason why that can't be true. You know what would help an awful lot? Draw your own force diagram and check. Okay? If this dot is this dude here, what do we got? We got Earth. What? And there's top acrobat exerting a force in what direction? Also down, absolutely. Uh, and what's balancing those forces? Okay. The surface or the floor. So which one matches? Wait a minute. The rules of the force diagram are one arrow per force. So strictly speaking, None of these match. Oh, I see. Okay. The rules of the force diagram are simple, but you've got to be careful about them. Uh, let's see. So what else will match A? What could that be doing? Isabel. Totally. Um, is it accelerating? Could it be moving up or down at constant velocity? Um, if I say final exam to you, just in general, apropos of nothing, 
Final exam. Does that get your attention? Yeah. Does that perk you up a little? Make you feel a little concerned? A little extra alert? No, no. You should react the same way when you hear constant velocity or zero acceleration. Because this object has, an ex has a total force of zero, that means it has an acceleration of zero, and that means it could totally be moving at a constant velocity in any direction. So I want you to get scared and nervous if you hear total force zero, acceleration zero, constant velocity, because your old brain will be ready to jump in at any point and say, not accelerating means not moving. No net force can't be moving. This is what it's like when you're trying to change your brain. You need to take an active role in getting yourself a better idea. Let's see. Could C be moving upward? Could the direction of the velocity of this object be up? No. C. Uh, What's the direction of the total force? Down. Yep. And if the total force is down, that means the acceleration must be down. Is it possible to have an acceleration in that direction and be moving in this direction? No. Nope. Okay. You betcha. What are you doing? You're slowing down. So if you are moving in the green direction and slowing down, what direction is your acceleration? Yes. Negative green. Whatever. The opposite direction. So if you know acceleration, and that's all you know, you don't know what direction you're moving in. That's the only trick. Make a force diagram. The rules are simple. Check it against what you know. You know the difference between velocity, acceleration, and position. Okay, we're going to be comparing quantities in plenty of these cases. Look at these choices and get familiar. And you're going to choose A if this is greater. You're going to choose B if this is greater. C means they're equal or close to equal. D means can't say. Not enough information given. So look at, the, as, look at the situations as described here. A small metal ball of mass something dropped from rest at 10 meters above the ground. A large metal ball of, rest, of mass blah. Oh, you know what? Let's just say that's 10, too. So what questions might you get? So uh, let's see, how about, it would be silly if there was a question like which has more mass because the number is going to be there. So uh, I'll tell you what, let's make up some numbers. Can we make up some numbers? Five kilograms, 50 kilograms. So let's see, when released, how about the length of time required to hit the ground? Which takes longer to hit the ground? Yes. Okay. Make yourself a sketch. You know that when released, big and small will have the same acceleration and hit the ground at the same time. Now, what if it's force earth on small and force earth on large.
which of these quantities is greater? Well, go back to, if at all possible, at any time, try to connect this to an experience you had. What? Why do you believe that? Remember an experience you had. When you held the medicine ball at constant acceleration, you were balancing the force of the earth on the medicine ball. When you held which is the earth pulling harder on? Connect it with what you feel. Yeah, totally. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So when doing anything like this, think of your experience. See the con you see the apparent contradiction for your old mind. Earth pulls harder on the big one, but they accelerate the same. What's up with that? We don't use that term. We, we say that's why we talk about the force of the Earth. The Earth is pulling harder on the big one. How come it accelerates the same as the small one? Don't forget what you know about Newton. The acceleration of anything is going to be equal to the total force and inversely proportional to the mass. This will be on a formula sheet, but yo, how much good is having it on the sheet if you don't remember what it means? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Hey, and it never hurts you to make a force diagram. Small. Large. Okay. Four times the mass. Four times the force of Earth. Four times the force, four times the mass. Same acceleration. Uh, which statement is not true about a f about the physical quantity called force? Remember the rules for the F word. Push or pull between two physical objects. That means touching. Unless one is the Earth. Is Earth or magnet, but we're not going to go into that, or electric charge. Remember, a force is like a handshake. What happens to the handshake when the hands aren't touching anymore? It ain't there. So anything force is not given, it's not taken, it's not applied. You apply mayonnaise to your sandwich, and it stays there. A force is exerted by one object on another. And when the interaction's over, so is the force.
when you throw the ball across the room, the ball took something from your hand and carried it across the room, but not a force. At some initial time, an object is at position x. At some later clock reading, blah, 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 the object is once again at the same position x. All right, here's a position. Here's a number line. If this is x, make a motion diagram. Mm. I teach you motion diagrams not because I want you to learn how to make a motion diagram, mm. because I want you to use a motion diagram to reason about mm. questions like this. The motion diagram is not the skill. Using it to answer a question like this is the skill. So use the tool that you can use. Let's see. If it's here at time zero, and it's moving, well, let's see. In between, it has to move, so maybe it moves here. And then later, it comes back here. What might the motion diagram look like? Well, if it goes out here, it's got to come back. And it could have done anything in between. Let's see. What's this displacement? Yep. Uh, what's its average velocity? Let's see. What's its average acceleration? Which is its change in velocity over the change in time. Did it have to change direction? Yeah. It couldn't have come back. if It, it oh. couldn't have been moving and come back. And reasoning about these things is a lot easier once you've made the um, motion diagram. Mm -hmm. How many different values of delta v could it have had? A lot. You can't say. I suppose. Because like a ball thrown up in the air comes back to the same position, but it's got the same acceleration the whole time. Inspect each of the, you're going to have an answer. Answer, answer. You know how to deal with this. Look at each of these and try to disprove each. <coughs> Because that's what scientists do. So you mark each of them, maybe true, or no, I know that ain't true. And then look at what's left. But you mark the heck out of your paper. Everything you write down is something you don't have to remember and hold in your working memory. For some observers, objects do not change velocity unless a non-zero total force is exerted on them by other objects. The name given to this phenomenon is, here's a freebie. This is inertia. The pizza on the car seat during the panic stop, from the perspective of the car, it accelerates for no reason. That is not inertia. And that is a non-inertial reference frame. Inertia is a phenomenon, something that happens. The property of objects that display inertia is called inertness. And this, for our purposes, that's the same as mass. More mass, more inertness. Okay, um, Pizza accelerates for no reason. For driver, that means the driver is in a non-inertial reference frame. Sid and Nancy are pulling on the same wagon with equal forces in the same direction. Make a force diagram for the love of Newton. <laughs> The wagon is accelerating at some number. Why? 
What's the relationship between the acceleration and the force? Well, let's see. They're pulling with equal forces. Acceleration is the total force over the mass of the wagon. If Sid falls down and Nancy continues to pull the same way as she did before, what happens to the acceleration of the wagon? This is Sid and Nancy pulling. If Sid falls down and Nancy continues to pull, now read. Okay. Eugenia told me this, and it served me very well in my graduate school career. Read the question three times before you pick up your pencil. Um, the, really, the most important thing is imagination. Sketch helps. Force diagram helps. So when you make the acceleration, or sorry, when you make the, so if this is the same force, if Sid and Nancy are exerting the same force, how does this acceleration compare to this acceleration? That's right. Half the force, half the acceleration. Now, these notes will be on the website, and I'll try to make a, a video lecture of the other half of the questions as well. You look in your dynamics, kinematics, I'll put the formula sheet on the web, and you have this list of questions. What? Yes, great, thank you for the reminder, yep. I'll stop that any minute before I forget.